Hello and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I'm Joe Fatehami and these are the headlines. The Taliban claim to have seized control of the Baghlan district as they launched a countrywide offensive after the U.S. missed a deadline for withdrawal of troops. While the district police confirmed two security bases fell to the Taliban. Elsewhere, unidentified gunmen killed a journalist in Kandahar province. The Taliban have denied involvement in the killing. Indian troops have martyred three civilians in occupied Jammu and Kashmir's Shopian district. The youths were targeted during a so-called cordon and search operation in Imam Sahab area of the district. This comes amid calls of protests in the occupied valley over senior Huryat leader Ashraf Serai's death in custody of Indian forces. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has called on Russia to seize reckless and aggressive actions against Ukraine. Speaking alongside Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in Kiev, he said Moscow has kept significant forces near the border despite announcing a withdrawal last month. Blinken also said that the United States is actively looking to increase security assistance to Ukraine. India has registered the world's highest cases and its record deaths in a day. The country has logged more than 412,000 infections and nearly 4,000 deaths overnight. Meanwhile, Pakistan has registered 108 deaths and over 4,100 cases in the past 24 hours. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 3.2 million lives and infected over 155 million people. France's Navy has dispatched two patrol boats to the waters of the British Channel Island of Jersey. Paris's move comes after Britain deployed two of its naval vessels in an escalating row over post-Brexit fishing rights. A Downing Street spokesman said British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has stressed the urgent need for de-escalation in tensions. Those were the headlines and detailed stories right after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back and now for the news in detail. In Afghanistan, the Taliban claim to have seized control of Baghlan district as they launched a country by offensive after the U.S. missed a deadline for withdrawal of troops. The district police confirmed two security bases fell to the Taliban. Elsewhere, unidentified gunmen killed a journalist in Kandahar province. Nebat Rawan was a press director at the Ministry of Finance and served a private channel as a news anchor. The Taliban have denied involvement in the killing. The latest violence follows a pattern of attacks targeting security officials, journalists and judges. Indian troops have martyred three civilians in occupied Jammu and Kashmir's Shopian district. The youths were targeted during a so-called cordon and search operation in Imam Sahab area of the district. Indian troops have sealed the entire area and the operation was going on till last reports came in. This comes amid calls of protests in the occupied valley over senior Huryat leader Ashraf Sehrai's death in Indian forces custody. In a tweet, Prime Minister Imran Khan termed the prolonged detention of Serai as illegal. He said Pakistan will continue to support Kashmiris and the UN-mandated right to self-determination. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has called on Russia to seize reckless and aggressive actions against Ukraine. He was speaking alongside Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in Kiev. He said Moscow has kept significant forces near the border despite announcing a withdrawal last month. Blinken also said that the United States is actively looking to increase security assistance to Ukraine. We spent some time talking about the threat that Russia continues to pose uh, to Ukraine. We've um, been watching this very, very closely and very, very carefully. 
Uh, we're proud to have supported Ukraine in the face of years of uh, Russian aggression and pressure from the invasion uh, of Crimea to hostilities uh, in, the, uh, in the Donbass. India has registered the world's highest daily cases since the pandemic began. The country has logged more than 412,000 infections and nearly 4,000 deaths overnight. Globally, the virus has claimed more than 3.2 million lives and infected over 155 million people. More in this report. Perilously low oxygen supplies, non-stop operating crematoriums and dying hope doesn't even begin to describe the COVID chaos in India. New Delhi is facing growing pressure to impose a nationwide lockdown to stem the devastating surge. Despite resources pouring in from across the globe, medical workers and local officials are still reporting the shortages, raising questions even among foreign donors of where the aid is going. Some of India's neighboring countries such as Nepal, Thailand and Laos are also seeing a huge spike in case numbers, prompting new lockdowns and travel bans. Meanwhile, the principal scientific advisor to the Indian government has warned that the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic is inevitable. A phase three is inevitable, given the high levels of circulating virus. But it's not clear on what time scale this phase three will occur. Hopefully, incrementally, but we should prepare for new waves. The U.S. has approved the voluntary departure of non-emergency government employees from India because of a surge in COVID-19 cases. The Biden administration also announced support for easing patent rules to allow for a wider production of vaccines. Canada has approved the use of the Pfizer vaccine in children aged 12 years and up, becoming the first nation to do so. Meanwhile, Australia's New South Wales state has tightened restrictions after a second local case of COVID-19 was identified. So essentially, for five o'clock today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we ask that nobody welcome more than 20 people into your home. We know that in, uh, transmission in the family home uh, is a high risk. And I appreciate that it's Mother's Day, but we also appreciate that 20 people within the home is manageable for people to celebrate that important day. Researchers in Norway and Denmark say they have more evidence that the AstraZeneca vaccine might raise the risk of unusual blood clots. A new report indicates that the Pfizer jab can protect people against worrying variants first identified in South Africa and the UK. While Moderna says its booster shot revs up an immune response against South African and Brazilian variants. Pakistan has reported 108 fatalities from coronavirus in the 24 hours. The death toll has crossed 18,500. The health ministry says over 4,100 people tested positive for the virus overnight. Pakistan has reported 845,000 infections since the pandemic began. Health officials say there are currently more than 84,000 active cases in the country. They say more than 743,000 people have recovered so far. Meanwhile, authorities say more than 3 million vaccines have been administered in Pakistan. Britain has sent two Royal Navy ships to Channel Island of Jersey amid concerns of a French blockade of its main port. Paris has threatened to cut off electricity to the island which began issuing licenses to French boats under a new system last week. Britain's Ministry of Defence says the HMS Severn and HMS Tamar will conduct maritime security patrols. Both warships are armed with cannons designed to protect against fast-moving attack crafts and two on-deck machine guns. In a call with Jersey Chief Minister John Lefondre, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, pledged his unwavering support for the island. Meanwhile, a French fishing fleet is staging a protest against post-Brexit restrictions of the island. Israeli troops have shuddered a 16-year-old Palestinian boy during clashes in the occupied West Bank's Nablus city. 
The situation in occupied Palestinian territories continues to worsen as Israel has intensified its human rights violations against the Palestinian people. In a statement, the Palestinian Health Ministry said a teenage boy was shot dead in Nablus following the Israeli military's unwarranted searches in the area. Meanwhile, the Palestinian Red Crescent says Israeli troops wounded four Palestinians during a protest in East Jerusalem. The Palestinians are protesting against forceful evictions from the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood in the occupied East Jerusalem. In a letter to the UN, Palestine's envoy Riyad Mansour drew world's attention to the plight of homeless Palestinian families in Sheikh Jarrah. He said Israel's eviction and annexation policies are aimed at ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. Meanwhile, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has called for de-escalation of crisis in East Jerusalem. Syria says Israel has carried out another airstrike on the southern governorate of Kunethra. The Syrian state media said the missile was launched after midnight on Jubata al Khashab town. It said no damage has been reported in the Israeli aggression. The attack comes a day after the Syrian army said its air defenses downed several Israeli missiles on the port city of Latakia. Russia says a U.S. presence in Syria is illegal. Moscow's statement comes in response to Pentagon's report that accused Russia of violating the deconfliction process in Syria. In a tweet, the Russian embassy in Washington said the U.S. does not have any right to criticize the Russian armed forces. It said Russian forces operate in Syria on the invitation of Damascus. Earlier in its report, Pentagon said Russia seeks to increase its influence in Syria. China has condemned a G7 statement expressing support for Taiwan. After a London summit, the G7 foreign minister said Beijing was guilty of human rights abuses. Talking to reporters in Beijing, a foreign ministry spokesperson called the statement a gross interference in China's internal affairs. Wang Wenbin said the G7 should take concrete actions to boost global economic recovery instead of disrupting it. In their communique, the foreign ministers said they will bolster joint efforts to stop China's coercive economic policies. But they held the door open for future cooperation with Beijing to promote global peace and security. They voiced concerns over Russian aggression against Ukraine and expressed support for Kiev. The group also urged North Korea to denuclearize and rejoin the non-proliferation treaty. The G7 ministers underscored the need to collectively tackle global challenges including COVID-19 and climate change. Yemen's Prime Minister Ramayin Abdul Malik Saeed has announced to intensify the military support to army and tribesmen against Houthis. Saeed visited the battleground city of Marib in a show of strength against the rebels. In a meeting with senior military officials, Saeed said government wants an agreement to create a strong division between Yemen and Iran. Referring to the government advances, he said history is in the making in Marib while the whole Yemen is ready to follow it. Meanwhile, Marib's governor, Sultan al-Arada, said the fight in the region has triggered huge displacement. Earlier, Houthis also announced that their negotiations with Saudi-led Arab coalition have failed in Oman. France has told Lebanon that it is losing patience over a deadlock in cabinet talks that have worsened the country's economic crisis. French Foreign Minister Jean Yves Le Drain said this during a meeting with Lebanese President Michel Aoun in Beirut. Last month, France announced measures to restrict entry for some Lebanese officials for blocking efforts to tackle the crisis. Paris seeks to ramp up pressure on Lebanon's squabbling politicians and launch reforms to unlock foreign cash. But after eight months, it has failed to persuade Lebanese officials to form a new government. Lebanon is racing towards a financial meltdown, posing the most serious threat to its stability since the 15-year-long civil war. More stories to follow, but right after a short break, stay tuned.
Welcome back in Colombia. Thousands of people have hit the streets of the capital, Bogota, for the eighth straight day. Official data shows 24 people have been killed so far, with over 800 injured since the start of the protests. Clashes broke out between the protesters and right police, who used tear gas to disperse the crowds. In a video, President Ivan Duque repeated comment allegations that drug trafficking mafias were behind the vandalism. He said more than 550 people have been arrested. The protesters torched police stations, vandalized bus shelters and banks and smoldered tires. The EU's chief negotiator for Brexit, Michel Barnier, is set to publish his tell-all book today. In book The Grand Illusion, a secret diary of Brexit, Barnier mostly reveals his criticism in hints. He writes of leaked information, secretive meetings organized with 15 minutes notice and surprise phone calls from the other side. Barnier compliments former British Prime Minister Theresa May as a courageous and tenacious woman. Barnier says his EU team was forced to take it apart step by step to the point of exhaustion. He also hinted at his possible candidacy in the book to run as the French president in the 2022 elections. Vietnam is one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change. Seawater intrusion is normally f in the normally fertile lands has forced many rice farmers to abandon the grain in favor of small shrimp ponds. This report has the details. For years, a Vietnamese farmer toiled on a silver of land sandwiched between the Mekong River and the South China Sea, a region widely known as Vietnam's rice bowl, to grow the prized grain. Now, thanks to climate change, Tha Thuy Than Tho has, like many other farmers in the region, swapped grains for prawns and taken advantage of devastating salination to farm shrimp about a decade ago. Every day, workers get up to tend to the shrimps in the vast farmland of the pond in the southern Sok Trang province. They feed them three times a day, measure the salt and pH level to maintain water condition in the shrimp cultivation. Before, when we planted rice, we were all very poor because the crops did not yield much profit. The rice was submerged in salt water that also had a very high pH level, this whole rice field. So we had no money and were very poor. But now, since we converted the field to raise shrimps, we are doing much better. Some of us even have money to save in the banks and build nice houses. With the salination becoming more devastating, the shrimp farmers are not sure how long they can enjoy their lucrative business. The area has started facing a fresh water shortage over the past two, three years, and the situation is getting worse. Experts say one of the reason is the construction of several hydropower dams upstream of the Mekong River. In the areas where farmers dug to make ponds for shrimps, they literally got rid of the uppermost layer of soil with all the nutrition. Therefore, after shrimp farms, these places will become a desert with nothing left. Nothing can grow, not even grass. That is the cost to pay. Vietnam has been ranked among the five countries likely to be most affected by climate change, with rising seawater levels and salination, particularly in the Mekong Delta region. According to the World Bank, climate change will reduce national income up to by 3.3 percent by 2050. Blue Origin billionaire a Jeff Bezos space company is targeting July 20 for its first suborbital sightseeing trip. This is a landmark moment in a competition to usher in a new era of private commercial space travel. More on this report. The new Shepard rocket and capsule combo is designed to autonomously fly six passengers more than 100 kilometers above Earth into suborbital space. The height is enough to experience a few minutes of weightlessness. The capsule features six observation windows that are nearly three times as tall as those on a Boeing 747 jetliner. The vehicle also has an escape mechanism in case of an emergency when it is being carried up by its booster. Blue Origin says it will offer one seat on the first flight to the winning bidder of an online auction. The proceeds will be donated to the space firm's foundation. Celebrities and the uber-rich seem to be the core market for the company's planned space trip. 
SpaceX has successfully launched and landed its latest Starship prototype, the SN-15. The high-altitude test flight was carried out from Boca Chica, Texas. The Starship is a test model heavy lift rocket developed to carry humans and 100 tons of cargo on future mission to Moon and Mars. The rocket is the company's next-generation fully reusable launch vehicle. It lies at the center of billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk's ambition to make human space travel more affordable and routine. Earlier, similar test flights of the Starship models SN9 and SN10 failed and ended with fiery explosions. Dogs and their human partners showed off their dance skills at the Eurasia 2021 Dog Expo in Russia. More in this report. Russians picked interesting dance partners for the Eurasia 2021 Dog Expo in the first week of May. More than 250 breeds and about 12,000 dogs performed in the event in Moscow. Participants said that people have a lot to learn from dogs. I am absolutely amazed. We actually came here to opt for a dog breed. We had several ones in mind. But now actually, I don't know where to look first. A dog is just an amazing creature. We can learn a lot from them. Love, faithfulness, how they look you in the eyes. It is unbelievable. The competition had two disciplines, freestyle and synchronized dance. In other business updates, U.S. e-commerce giant Amazon has decided to add Pakistan to its approved seller list. The announcement was made by the advisor to the Prime Minister on commerce through a tweet. He termed the development a great opportunity for youth, especially women entrepreneurs. Pakistani sellers can now create their profiles on the e-commerce platform to sell their products worldwide. Most European stocks have edged up as investors monitor a slew of corporate earnings and await the policy decision from the Bank of England. Italy's FTSE MIB is leading the gains, rising over half a percent. Frankfurt's DAX, London's FTSE and CAC 40 in Paris have added marginally as well. The pan-European stock 600 is trading flat earlier almost all major bourses in Asia, but in positive territory except for Australia's ASX 200. And now the weather situation from around the globe. And that is all for now with the latest updates. You can follow us on social media at Interstock News.